Okay. Okay. Oh, I forgot the stinger. The cool graphic. No. <laughs> it's look, wonderful. I have a lower third for you, too. Yeah. Oh, glory, oh. Uh, <laughs> so wonderful. Um, you're on, so... Okay. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, <laughs> to IQ Designer. We are trying out a new camera. We can't wait to see if it works. But it's a, a camera that follows you around. And so uh, it's kind of funny, though, because it looks for a face. And so if I, if I move too fast, then it focuses on one of the Santa faces over there. <laughs> and zooms in yes so uh but it's going to be really cool and pj is really excited about it he wants to get another one so oh walk around a little bit, hmm? yeah. Around yeah. A little bit? is it is it following me now i think so yes it is it's following me yes it is it's so cool if i go down so see it's keeping my face one in the middle yeah see we are so high tech now can they see these fancy cameras we have now can they see them but maybe if I move over here a little bit okay More. no it still doesn't show them. but anyhow we have fancy new cameras we have a camera that follows us around and we have it all going on so we're really really excited about everything so and you know we're going to expand uh, we're moving into a building uh, two doors down and we're going to use that as our uh, classroom uh, not only our in-person classroom but our virtual classroom so we have so many things that we are planning we're also uh, working on our Christmas decorations in the showroom and we'll announce when we are ready for uh, when it's all set up because we have something in the works I you know I think with Steve's aid that it's gonna work but if I was doing it by myself it just wouldn't come off as neat as I'm dreaming but um, I we will all let you know what we're planning for in the showroom and of course we'll take the cameras down there and give you a, uh, a, a tour through our Christmas decorations so okay we're talking about Christmas today we get to start opening our Christmas box so I didn't even open it I'm not even sure sure what box uh, gift number one is in but I do know that okay so the bonus was kind of right out there for you to see and then you got a candy bar but notice mine is missing I can't blame it on anybody else I already ate it <laughs> I did so but then in this bag and some people did open it and that was fine but we're hoping they didn't open the lid because we have something really cute inside so open up your Gloria Horn sewing studio travel mug it's our 40th anniversary mug so each and every one of you got one of these and then open it up and there's a little present inside and it's a pin that says queen because we are all queens I'm gonna pull it open and here look at this this cute little pin because you know if if you're family or wherever you go if they don't know that you are the queen you gotta declare it and it's just really cute with sparkly little diamonds so so pj can we use hey, this facebook, kim facebook is not working oh facebook isn't working yeah i don't know okay to... then um, well you keep going i'll um, keep going yeah so and we'll just talk about the presents and then when we go to the lesson uh, we we might have to go out and come in again. Okay. Okay. So well, I think we're good. You, you can just use the main camera. Just use and the main camera for Steve now. Okay. Steve. PJ's going to get Steve. He had work to do. He's going to join us in a little bit. But hopefully you can see that cute little queen pin. All right. So that was uh, your two bonus gifts. Now let's take a look for uh, present number one. Okay. 
and and I I wanted to have cute boxes. So uh, I mean that's part of your present that I had cute boxes that you could reuse. You could store projects in these. Uh, you could give gifts in them. They're really really nice. So I'm gonna open up the first one. Okay, this looks like maybe the second half because I'm seeing numbers like 18, 14. But do notice how cute all the packaging is. And we were thinking that to save you time this Christmas that you could reuse these little bags and give gifts uh, yourself. So PJ went looking for you, Steve, because he says we're, Facebook isn't working. Oh, there's a check mark that we hit when we started the show. Oh, oh, and you did it? No, we, it would have been... We need good. to go out and come in again? We can do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what, whatever you think we should do. We can do that. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, we could go out and come in when we go to IQ Designer. Because... But it could be some of these people are on Facebook waiting for us. Go out. Go okay. All right. Bye. <laughs> We're going to go out and come in again. Steve says to do that. Just one check mark at the top. Okay. Oh, I swear I checked it. I swear okay. I checked it. Just enter us to and we'll come right back in. Okay. And go. And we'll actually just delete. We'll just delete the first video probably. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just start from the very beginning like and pretend it. like I haven't done a thing. Nope. Okay. I got to get my ribbon back on. So I have to change the stream name. Okay. From the intro again? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because we'll want to leave this one up. I'm going to pretend like that never happened. Right, pretend like it never happened. I, I'm going to have a drink of water. Hmm. Now it's not I'll working. Okay. I swear I checked it. Oh, well. Stuff happens. It's working fine. And you know what? That's the thing they like about what we do is that it's live and we make mistakes and we fix them. They like that better. They said, mm -hmm. no, uh, ever edit. Mm -mm. Home Studio page. Oh, that's because the page came up first. Which one's the right group? You gotta do this one, the right first one. That's the page, the page yep. not the group? Not the group. The page. It's already checked. Um, and I don't know why it wasn't on. What? No. Tommy pulled it up on Facebook and it looked fine. It's and sometimes, who knows? Oh, maybe we do have it right. Yeah, that's what we did. Okay. All right, there we go. Don't be so hard on yourself. You won't believe how many mistakes we've made. <laughs> but they say that's what they like about us. We're real. We are real. Yeah, yeah we're actually. good. So, there you go. You're back on. All right, I'm on. Again, like Wonderful. You. And I see my name right there. That is so cool. You don't know how excited we are about all these changes, so this is all wonderful. So welcome to our IQ Designer lesson. Uh, but the, the best part of today is that we get to open uh, the, our Christmas box and find our present number one. But first we're going to um, open the bonus gifts. Now, the first bonus gift that you received was two cones of our our favorite thread exquisite well, see our only thread this is what we we tried others we were so satisfied with this that we just eliminated all the others we love our exquisite uh uh polyester 40 weight embroidery thread so each of you got two cones of thread okay as as one bonus so if that's if you went for the 24 day the advent and um and then the other bonus this bonus Everybody got this one, whether they were the 12 day or the 24 day. And that is our wonderful 
Gloria Horn Sewing Studio travel mug. So because we're hoping each and every one of you someday travels here and comes to visit us. So uh, we would just absolutely love that. Come and take a class from us. But if you can't, don't worry, because even when we start classes in our new building, um, we are going to broadcast those. So you won't miss a thing. So just keep tuning in. We are loving all of this, and, and we're glad so many of you like it too. But you're going to take your travel mug and open it up, because inside your travel mug is a cute little pin, and it says Queen because each and every one of you should be treated like queens, right? So each and every one of you love making gifts for people and making people happy. So you are the queen of the land. So just a cute little pin. I'm gonna put mine back into my coffee mug and then we're gonna open up our cute boxes. So we did tie each and every present with a ribbon in hopes that you would reuse that ribbon. Okay, and then uh, the gifts are in these cute boxes that we're hoping that you are able to reuse these too. So, okay, so I'm opening the first box and I'm seeing in here, I'm seeing numbers, but they're higher numbers. So I think those are for the second half. So I am going to close that one up and slide it aside because we're doing the first half. Okay. And then we'll open that one up and that's it. This is, um, this is day one through 12. Now let's take a look. So each item is wrapped in something cute. Okay. And well, not each and every, some, some of them are not reusable, but here I'm seeing 12, 11, I'm seeing two. Okay. So lots of bags that we are hoping you reuse and it makes your Christmas a little easier because you're about to give a gift and you could just take our sticker off and put a present in it. Here is present number one. Now, not all of you got the same, um, same brand, but every one of you got the same thing. So I'm going to open mine, and you open yours at the same time, and this is what we received today was basting glue. So we, every sewer needs this. I was trying to find products that I knew everybody would like. And oh, that's what we were gonna do, Steve. We were gonna sell this, but we'll do that tomorrow. But we'll we, do we are selling the Advent box. So if you, yeah. have, if you didn't get an Advent box or you, you want another one, then it's in the bubble now. It's sold 107. Yes, yes, so, cause, so you can join in and have fun with us. Uh, yeah, um, it's going to go, so this is the 24 day, so we are going to, tomorrow, we are going to open up present two and present three, right? Because three is on Sunday and we won't be here. And uh, so we will be doing that at one o'clock tomorrow with Joni. And what we're going to do tomorrow um, for our serger lesson is we are going to sew together the triangle bag. So I'm going to have Joni do the belt loop maker again so we can have a, a little strap for our triangle bag. And we're going to sew the whole thing together on the serger. So that's tomorrow's lesson. And we're going to do present number two and present number three. So this is going to be a lot of fun. All right. So who doesn't like presents? Now you don't have to tell anybody what you got, but did any of you open them all? So we want we want you to come clean here. I yes, did. yes. So I opened all <laughs> yeah. mine. Steve opened all of his. Yes. Okay. So I'm just gonna put that over here. Okay. My little bag over here. Now I am so excited about this. Um, my niece is getting married on Saturday, December 16th, and my whole family's going to the wedding, and we are so excited to be together again. And uh, she's just delightful. Um, and uh, she grew up in Key Biscayne, Florida, and she moved to, she was in like hotel management, and she moved to Alaska. So past couple years, she's been living in Alaska, but she's coming back to Florida to have her wedding. So that's where we get to go uh, the weekend before Christmas, and we are just so delighted. We can't wait. But I wanted to make her something. And so I thought of the Kelly bag, and this is what, and. And I want you all, after the show is over, to go to Sally Tomato's um, YouTube page and watch the Kelly bag 
online class. So I think she just calls it the Kelly online class because she's we, we love Sally Tomato. We love all her products. Yeah, and I looked at it and saw that she did quilting on it. And I thought, do I want to do the quilting on my sewing machine? No, I want to add a fancy fill. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to set this up, set the fabric up so we can do a fancy fill. And I am using the blue velvet that she features on her bag, on her package. So I thought that would be kind of neat to do. Okay, now, um, so what we are going to do, we are going to be selling a couple kits today, and then we'll have a couple more kits for this project tomorrow. Um, but uh, I, I'm going to go over to the sewing machine now, and we're going to get it set up, and I'm going to kind of read you over the directions too. Okay, so what I'm looking for... So, See if it follows me. I'm going to take my fusible fleece. Before we go over, mm -hmm. we're, we're, um, people are asking about the 12 day box, and we're still oh, yeah. selling that too. Yes. So it's in okay. the bubble. Okay, the if you now. want to do the 12 day, we'll get it out to you as fast as we can. We do have them ready. So that is in the bubble right now. And, and we have a, had a couple people that wanted to, that bought the 12 day and wanted to up. To the 24 day and so we are ready to ship out day 13 through 24 too so but we just didn't do uh, a price on that maybe we'll do that one tomorrow yes so we are ready we love that that um, you've joined us in this and I, I do really think it's gonna be a lot of fun so thank you all so much okay so what do I need first thing I have uh, in my machine I have hooped uh, my biggest hoop with no show Okay, I need uh, to do the bag. I need a, a heavyweight fusible fleece. Now this will all be in your kit. And then I also need a piece of the velvet. And I guess maybe mine is right here that I was going to show in the kit. Okay, so you're going to get enough velvet, velvet to do the bag. You'll also get the lining and everything. So. Okay, so I'm going to take my velvet and I'm going to cut that in half. And you know, I always say I always look for my purple handled scissors and there was a blue handled pair. I, I've looked and looked that I found my purple. So I honestly tell you the truth when I really like a product. It just, I like the sound it even makes when it's cutting. So I'm just cutting it at the fold. So in your kit will be three ace yard is exactly what she calls for in the pattern. So I have my three ace yard of my velvet. You could use any fabric you wanted. In fact, when I do Lisa's, it's going to be uh, satin, white satin. So, and she, I think Chris, Chris told me her, her, oh, I better call her back because now I forget already. But what I'm going to do is uh, find out what color, what ring she has, whether it's silver or gold. And I'm going to do my fancy fill and, you know, all my other stitching, her monogram in either silver or gold. All right, let's head over to the sewing machine and we will get started. I have my paper. We're going to start out and let you do a screenshot of my notes so everybody will have the notes right away. But if you do purchase a kit, we are going to print out my notes and put it in your kit for you. So you will have written right on paper, which makes it easy to follow. Okay, all right. Now we're checking to see if the camera follows me. It is following me. Okay, so I think I'll go here. Is it? It's looking for me. Is it looking for me? Oh no, it lost me. <laughs> it found a, it went, found one of the sayings. So, so that. But still, we're good. We're good, right? Okay. So, but that's what they do on streaming. So. Many times the people who stream and sell on these kind of platforms are selling clothing and they want to turn around and everything. So uh, it is possible to have them follow you. Okay, so now this is page one. Okay, we're going to let you screenshot that. See, over to your right a little bit. Uh, to my right? Okay. So on here, so take a screenshot with your phone if you can. Up there. That's that picture. It's that picture that, there? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right there. Perfect. About right yeah. there is good. Okay. So it starts out, cut two pieces of main fabric, 22 and a half by 13 and a half. Cut two pieces of fusible fleece, 11 and a half by eight. Bigger than what she says in her pattern. Okay. There. Yeah. We looking okay? About right there? I think they can do it. Yeah. Right? The bubble might be covering that. The, the bubble go down a little bit? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to change. I, I want to do all three pages real quick. And then, but we are ready to ship these projects. We have all, everything in stock to ship it. Okay. So the next page. I'm just going to look, oh, that's, that's, oh, I'll go a little lower. So you do a screenshot of that one. Hold on, hold it there for just a second. Okay. Okay, and then we will do a screenshot of the last page. Okay, I think that location is pretty good. I'm covering up a little bit of the words with my thumb. So there, we're good. Yep. We did it good. We okay. Down a little. Down? Yeah. Bubbles, in Bubbles in the way. Was it in the way the whole time? We'd like to see the first page again, I think. It's the first page again. Okay. Yep. All right. So now we're going to go, we're okay. I'm going to go back to the first page. Okay. I'm going to do them all again one more time. Just so, yeah. yeah. The whole just, thing? Yeah. The whole just, thing yeah. again. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Okay, they love getting these notes. So tell us if I think it's. The bottom is what they can't see, this bottom part here. They can't see the. Oh, okay, so if I lean it a little bit. Oh, okay, you can move it, and then it won't move. Maybe we should lay it flat on the table sometime. On a flat table? Yeah, let's do the flat yeah, table. Or, for yeah, for now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, next time we'll do that. Yep. Okay. Okay, because guess what? Next time, uh, Kathleen, who works here, has this really cute little Christmas tree that she made. Um, but she said to me, Gloria, I know you can do it in IQ Designer, and they're adorable. So we are definitely next, next Friday, we're going to do little Christmas trees. Okay. Should I go through page two again and page three again? Yes, please. Okay. And here we go, and let me know if I'm holding it in the right spot. Mm -hmm. That's good, okay. Give them a couple more seconds, and I'll go to that third page again. Okay. I know they love getting the notes. Okay. There we go. This way. A little bit, and I'll hold it still. A little more left. A little more to the left here. Okay. Okay. And today we are definitely going to do it on, on the Solaris, and then we're going over to the Altair, and we're going to do it on the Altair. Okay. Okay. So um, my first step, well, I tried reading the pattern. So this is her pattern. This is the Kelly pattern. And you can see she did crosshatch. And in her video, she does it on the sewing machine. She is just like so skilled. Uh, she did it without even marking lines. She just zipped along and made it. So um, I would say mine would look terrible if I did that. And I thought we love using our IQ designer. And so I did mine with a crosshatch, but, um, I really am dying to do one with a fancy fill. Okay. And I read over the instructions and it was like, okay, so you gotta, you have to cut this and you have to cut the fusible fleece and, and then you have to position it. And it's like, it wasn't making sense. So I went to her video first thing to, um, watch her video. And then I understood how this was going to be made. So it's really nice that on a lot of her purses and bags and totes that she has a video on YouTube on how to make it, but we're going to make it even better by adding our fancy fills. So, okay. So I am, I'm going to go home. Okay. 
And my first step, I told you to cut the fabric and I cut mine bigger than what she says in the pattern. So I have cut two pieces of main fabric, 22 by 13 and a half, cut two pieces of fusible fleece, 11 and a half by eight, and set those aside. Hoop no-show stabilizer. Now what I wanted to show you is as I, after I sewed it, Okay, this camera right here? That one, yeah. yeah. Oh, this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or the cell phone. This one. This, oh, the yeah. cell phone. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this, but look at how um, my presser foot kind of roughed up my, my velvet, and I left it that way. Okay, so this, this one, where's the, okay. So I went afterwards, and I ironed it, and, and it took that away, but do you see that? I didn't iron this over here. It kind of roughed up my velvet and I needed to press that to put it back in shape. So what we're gonna try with this one is raising our presser foot up a little bit so that it doesn't graze across the fabric. I may have a burr on the bottom of my foot, I wonder, you know? So that's what, what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna get Steve's opinion on this, but we're gonna first go into uh, settings. Okay, so settings is at the top. Okay, I'm gonna use my mouse so I don't block your view with my hand, but it looks like a piece of paper at the top, settings, and I'm gonna to go to page eight of 12. So, eight of 12, and then it right down here is embroidery foot height. Click on that, and I'm thinking if I just raise it up to the point zero eight zero and it kind of gets you mixed up here because wouldn't you think if you were raising your foot up a little that the numbers would be up here uh so it, it, i feel like um the higher numbers should be above the six but so they did it so the lower numbers are above the so you kind of have to look at it and say to yourself okay point zero eight zero is bigger than 0 .060, and I'm gonna go to 0 .080. Do you think that'll do it, Steve? Just that one bump up if I go to, so here I am at embroidery foot height, and I just went one up. Yeah, I, I don't wanna go up too high because that can affect the tension on the machine. Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see if it, if it still makes the mark on my fabric. We're, we're gonna take my foot off and see if I have a burr on the bottom of the foot. I'm wondering if a topper would topper yeah you know i'm worried about getting the topper out yes so maybe heat away but then i don't want the heat no to, to affect the and really all you have to do is press it so when i pressed it i could feel the nap you know how it's soft going in one direction and and rough going in the other and so i on purpose i only ironed half of my sample here uh, so you could see that yes you can just press it out so so don't worry too much about it and, and we'll try to see if, uh, it would be interesting to see if this does fix it. Okay, all right, so what do I need to do? I need to position, I need to, I need to know what size to make my basting line or my pace, placement line. Marilyn and, Brown says she uses heat on velveteen and it works. And it works so, good, so, okay, yeah. so the so, heat away, yeah. the press away. Yeah. Yeah, we'll show that tomorrow. Yep. Okay, so it, she says to cut 10 and a half by 13 and a half. So they said, that's what size I wanna make my um, placement line. Uh, so that, I, and it's gonna be my cutting line later too. Now if you're on, and we'll go over to the Altair, but if you're on the Altair, Meridian or Destiny, you're gonna make your, your line a little bit smaller, 9.4. I always go just a little bit smaller than the maximum hoop size by 13 and a half. So, so for the Solaris, we're going to first go in, and here I, I changed the size to 0 0.80, and then we are going to say OK. Go into IQ Designer, all right, Shapes. So here's the shapes, it's a circle and square. And then the square, which is 01, the very first one on all the machines. Okay, size. Now remember I looked in my pattern and it is 13 and a half tall by 10 and a half wide. So I'm gonna go to my keyboard on my Solaris Vision 
keyboard and I am going to make that first dimension the height which is 13.5 13.5 set and now I'm doing the width see how it's highlighted and now I'm going to put in 10.5 10.5 and set then OK Line properties, how do I want to sew this? I just wanted a line in the hoop so I would know where to place my fabric. I also needed a line on my IQ designer so, so I would know exactly where to place that piece of fusible fleece. And what we are including in your kit is a heavyweight fusible fleece. So, um, so it, it'll give the bag a little more body. I really do like the, I do like the heavyweight fusible fleece a lot better than the regular fusible fleece. So on your broderie purse, um, Table runners, we, we put heavyweight fusible fleece in those kits, and we're going to do that from now on because I, I do like it a lot better. Did you show the pattern? Yeah, I did show the pattern. Okay. okay. So, and it says right on the first page how big to cut the pieces. Okay. But we cut them bigger because we're going to trim it down. Okay. So, we're going to use, so she says for you to have three eighths of a yard of fabric. And uh, which is 13 and a half, and we're just going to cut it on the fold so our fabric is going to be 13 and a half by 22. Okay, so now I need to tell the machine how I want to sew this out. Right now, it's going to sew it out as a zigzag. So we're going to click on line properties, straight stitch, red, I'm on step number 12, red, and okay, line bucket. You always have to click on line bucket. That was one thing I always forgot. But see, it's highlighted now. And I'm going to click on the line or just touch the line to turn it red. We need this later. So we're first just going to do it as a placement line. So, and what we're going to need it later when we tack down our fabric. So memory, save on the machine. And we're going to remember it as the red rectangle. Okay, next. Here's where we tell it the stitch length. I'm just going to go with the default because all it is is a placement line and the stitch length doesn't matter. So set, OK. This is like your point of no return. If you didn't save it, you're not going to be able to save it. It wasn't hard to bring up so if you forget to save, but it's so much easier if you have it. So OK. So this sentence right here is really to remind you to save. So, okay, so if I didn't save, I would have pressed cancel and gone back and pressed memory, save on the machine. So, okay, add. What do I need to add? So, in her pattern, she shows you to add the fusible fleece. And it's one quarter inch up from the bottom. So, it's how am I going to do that? I figured out a way. Okay, so now I was add. Now, IQ Designer, then shapes again, so the circle and the square, the square, OK, then the size. So I'm going to click on size, I'm going to go to the keypad because I'm on the Solaris, and this time I'm going to make that rectangle the exact size that she told me to. So I'm looking here, the fleece is ten and a half by seven inch. Okay, so the ten and a half is the width and the first dimension is the height. So this is seven. So seven set and then ten point five and set. All right, so I have my fusible fleece now and okay, so now we're going to go to the next page and click on step Number 30 is OK. Click on OK. Line properties. See, right now it's going to sew that as a zigzag. So line properties, straight stitch, green, just because I already used red. And I like using colors that I can see the color change. So like a bright green. So green, OK. Line bucket. Touch the line to turn it green. Next, think in a second, memory, save on the machine. So we may need this later. 
Okay. Then set. Okay. Now, where am I going to put this? She she told us to put the fleece a quarter inch above the bottom. So I'm going to go up to settings. I need a grid line in order to see that. So we're going to go up to settings and we're, it, it opens up at page 8 of 12. So, and right there is grid. So click on that line, the grid line, and I went to 3 8 grid. I really like the one inch grid. Oh, if I have, no, one inch, one inch, one, I think three eighths helps me. But you may say one inch is better for me. So whatever one you want, okay, then okay. Donna asks, the, the frame height and width, should it be the reversed? Uh, the height? Or why, why would it not be reversed, I guess? Well, because, um, well, it's just the machine asks for what height, the height of the fabric first. Okay. So, yeah, it's because you would think, well, I, I thought opposite, and honestly, I put it in wrong. And that's what made me realize that I have to put that, that higher dimension. So we're going with a rectangle that is in this direction. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. Okay. So now I have my grid lines. So it's selected. The last thing you put in is always the last thing. It is always selected. So I need to move it. So we're going to go to edit, move, and I'm going to move it down, but it's kind of hard to see, right? So I'm going to move it down to where, so there, the bottom red line is, I'm going to just move it almost to the next line. So then I'm thinking, and it's, it's just going to be, she does not want the fleece to be in your seam line. I'm just going to move it down a little bit. I'm going to zoom in. I think I'll go to 200%, but now I'm going to have to pan. So I clicked on pan, and I want to move the whole thing up and take a look. So if I was on the line, that would have been 3 eighths. So I was just a little bit, a little bit below that line, and I'm thinking I have the quarter inch. But I am going to stitch it. When I go to stitch it, and, and we'll be going through this, but when I go to stitch it, I'm going to stitch right below that line so there's no chance that the fleece will be in our seam line because that will make it hard to turn. So I think I'm good right there. So I have, I have the red line, and now the reason why this, remember we chose green, but the reason why the, it's red is because that is selected. That's what the, the fusible fleece rectangle is what's being moved right now. Then I'm going to go back to 100%, all right? And then, so I put move it down so it is a quarter inch above the inside of the big rectangle. I didn't know how to word it. And then, okay. So, okay. So, I'm in embroidery at this point. Add IQ Designer. Now, um, at, later on, I get rid of the grid lines because they're in my way right now. But just hang on, and I have that step in here. So, add is step number 49. What do I need to add? So, I have like a placement line, uh, and then I have my line to uh, position my fusible fleece. I didn't do a placement line for that. I just thought we, we've been sewing long enough. We, we're going to get that right anyhow. And then you'll see. And then I'm going add IQ designer because I need to baste my velvet in place. So add IQ designer. Memory pocket with the arrow pointing out, So it, which is at the top. Memory pocket with the arrow pointing out. And I need my red rectangle. Now look, I have no idea why it did this, and I was hoping Steve would be here to explain to me why he did it, but my red rectangle isn't there. So what I did is I moved the slider bar all the way down, and there's my red rectangle right there. So, okay, so, so I'm gonna pick the red rectangle. So if you're, maybe because I have so many things saved, I have a lot saved, so maybe this is a sign that I should uh, maybe get rid of some of these shapes that I've saved. But So if that happens to you, just go to the very bottom and look for your red rectangle. The reason why I have two is because, remember, I did my practice one. So I'm going to pick the last one that I put in, which will be, for me, will be in the lower right-hand corner. For you, yours will be in the upper left-hand corner. 
Okay, then select it and press OK. Now I want to get rid of the grid line because I can't see my rectangles. So I'm going to go up to settings, page 8 to 12, which is where it will open it up. Click on grid and get rid of the grid. No grid right there. Then OK. Line bucket. Okay, so line bucket. Touch the line to turn it blue. So remember, it's the exact same size as the red rectangle, but I want it to sew out at a different time. So I'm going to click on, um, oh, oh, I forgot to tell you to go to line properties. So I should have had, after step 60, I should have had line properties, straight stitch, blue, and, and a blue that you can see, don't pick dark. So I think this blue will be good. Blue, okay. So on the ones that I pack with the kits, it will have all the steps in it. And I am just gonna grab a red pen and so I can mark my paper and I know right about where I'm missing some steps. Okay, so now line bucket. You always have to remember to click on line bucket and then Step 62, which it, it will be different on the, on the paper that you get in your kit. But maybe I'll put that all in one line so the numbers won't vary from the video. Okay, so we, we won't be changing the numbers. Uh, we're going to have the same numbers as on the paper. Okay, so now I clicked on line bucket, step 61. Click on the line to turn it blue, which is step 62. Next. Okay, what did I do? I, I basted or I tacked down my velvet. I'm not worried about the stitch length. I'm just going to leave it at the point zero eight zero. So we're going to click on set and OK. Do I need to save that one? No, because I have the red one and that's the exact same size. So OK. Now we get to add the fancy fill. So we are, okay, so we have to go to embroidery. Okay, so we're gonna go to next step, right before it says um, add the fancy fill, I should have clicked on embroidery. Okay, then embroidery, then add, oh no, I guess I was in embroidery already. So add the fancy fill, so IQ designer, Step 67, pocket with the arrow pointing out again. And still no, no red rectangle, so I know I have to go down to the bottom. I'm hoping Steve knows why. So red rectangle. Linda says hers also shows up that way now. Now, maybe we have too much in our memory, Linda. Maybe. Like is, is it alphanumerical? Well, or? 340? No. Huh. Hmm. We'll so we'll, we'll I'm out. thinking we have, you know I have so much in the memory on this machine. And I bet Linda does too. So Linda, do you have a lot in your memory like I do? Because maybe that's what our problem is and then we need to delete some things. So, okay. So I found my red rectangle. Okay. Line properties, piece of paper, no sew. So I don't want to sew this line again. Remember, I already basted down my fabric. So no sew, okay. Then you're gonna go, we're gonna go to the next page. Line bucket, touch the line, the red line, so it turns gray. And you'll see that gray no-so symbol in the window here. Then we're going to, we need to fill it. So we're going to go to fill properties. So right down here. So this was line properties. And the, it's a piece of paper with a line below it. Now we're going to go to fill properties. And there's a piece of paper with a filled block below it. So we're going to go to fill properties. Fancy fills select and I wanted to do mine looking like hers but I um, 
now I wish I would. Well, when I do Lisa's, I think I'm going to do hers with a really pretty fancy fill on white satin. So I'll be sure to show you that. But let's, I need two matching ones. So I already made one. So I need to make another one. So I'm going to go to 016 the lattice with stars. You do have the plain lattice in here, but I really like the lattice with stars. See the plain lattice is in there, but I love that one. And you know, she, her mom told me she's gonna have little pearls and wouldn't it look so pretty to put little pearls here and there, um, right where the stars are. So I have to do it. So 016, okay. You know, that's what people love is when you make a gift where you thought of them and you did it in in their color of their rings. So the meadow of their rings, the color of their dress um, or their bridesmaids colors, something like that. It says you thought of them and people are so touched when you do that. And that's what makes sewing so much fun when we're able to do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna pick purple just cause I haven't done purple yet. Purple, okay. Fill bucket, click inside the rectangle, just right in the middle of it to fill it. Next, and I kind of thought that they were too small. I'm just eye judging it at that point. I could have turned on the grid and looked at it that way. In fact, let's do that. Let's go up to settings and go to the grid and let's put on the one inch grid there. And so I can, it looked like Jess, you know, she's Sally Tomato. I don't know what her real last name is, but um, I did, Sally is her middle name and the tomato, she said that's an iconic image for sewers is the red tomato. So she decided to name her business Sally Tomato, which I think is really cute. We love all her products, we really do. So I'm looking at it and my diamonds are about three quarter inch. I wanna make them bigger, but I'm just gonna eye judge it. Now I'm gonna turn off the grid because it gets me too mixed up. So I'm gonna go back up to the grid, click on the one inch and say no grid and okay. So I played around with it. So first I went from 100 to 125 and I looked at it because if you pick a different fill, you may want, and I still looked at it and went, oh, I still think that's too small. So I went to the 125 and I went up to 150. So you want to make both of them the same, your front and your back the same, okay? Then. Another feature that we started, we learned about and we're using all the time, we outline on. That eliminates the jump stitches and it sews out a lot faster. So outline on and okay. Set, okay. Embroidery. I didn't save it. I better save it because I know I want to do another one. Memory save on the machine. All right, so our first step, so I think um, our first, let's just go through the steps. Okay, so we will, I think I'll, I'll return just cause we'll see all the steps lined up when we are in this mode, the editing mode. So first one is our placement line for the, uh, that we're just gonna sew into the no-show. Second line is we are going to tack down our fusible fleece. If you decide, oh, I would rather have two of those, but then you'd have to move both. So do it my way. You'll see, it's really easy. Okay, so that's our tack down for the fusible fleece. We're gonna stop and trim away the excess fusible fleece after this one. Then we're gonna lay our main fabric down and then stitch it in place with the next rectangle. Then we're gonna sew the fancy fill. So all my steps are there. So I'm gonna click on embroidery and we will switch over to the machine and I will start sewing. So I decided I wanted to do mine in the um, silver and I like the really bright shiny silver, which is MS1 in the King Star. So that's the one I'm using. Okay, and just threaded it the normal way. Now look, this time, this spool of thread, the thread doesn't um, fall off the spool. 
easy. So I'm not using a thread net. But if you do get a spool of thread that kind of unwinds easier, then I do put a thread net on there. But I do have my felt pad first. I have my Kingstar Metallic, that felt pad prevents your uh, Kona thread from being wobbly. And if it wobbles, it might jerk, and which will make your thread start to fray and break. And then I have my gray spool cap. Okay, and all right, so I'm already threaded, so I'm just gonna sew. I'm kind of looking at it and I got a bubble in this corner. So I'm just gonna gently take that and pull that bubble out. So if I see any bubbles, you know, big bubbles, I, I always feel it and make sure that I have the, the hoop inside. I can feel that it's even back here, that uh, this hoop isn't up too high. Okay, so I'm ready to sew and I'm gonna press start and make sure that that fabric doesn't roll. So I'm gonna hold that aside. And it goes around twice, even though we don't need it to. And notice I'm on my table and I really had to pull my machine forward because uh, we don't have much room. We're so excited about getting uh, the new location. Two doors down, that's all it is. We're not moving, we're keeping this. And uh, we're gonna have it two doors down. If, it, if we need to carry uh, sewing, a lot of sewing machines to and from, we'll stop in the chiropractor. Yes. <laughs> yes, right? And we have a chiropractor next door. Really nice young couple, they're both part chiropractors. And uh, they signed a long lease, so. Um, but I did tell the landlord, if that spot opens up, we want that one too. And then we'll have three buildings in a row. That'll be really neat. So and thank you all so much. There's a coffee shop next door. Yes, there is a coffee shop. Yeah. Needle and Bean. Yeah, Needle and Bean. Isn't that funny? They sell uh, vintage records and coffee. Uh, yes, I know. And then we have the best pizza place across the street. Um, they are the official pizza of the Pittsburgh Penguins and the official pizza of the Pittsburgh Steelers. So that says a lot. Caliente's, so good, so good. So we've got a nice little location here. And what we like about it is this area is very, very, very safe. Uh, we leave merchandise out on our front porch. We don't even cover it. We don't hide it. And no one's stolen anything in all the years that we've been here. So it might be because the police station is just three blocks away, right? Oops, oops, I bumped my hoop. I could have, okay, I'm all right. It didn't pop out, okay? But that might be, what, no, we're safe here yeah. no matter what. It's a very, very safe area, yes. Yeah, so, so when you come to visit, you don't have to worry. My daughter laughs about me, you know, I shouldn't tell anybody this, but I lost my keys in my car and I can't find them. And so I've been, I've been driving around probably three weeks uh, without with my keys in my car but I don't go very many places it's just to work in home but I did I did that one other time I guess it fell down in a crevice and I went to a restaurant that was near downtown and it was valet parking only and I had to tell the guy I said I can't hand you keys they're in the car he was so shocked <laughs> And I was like, you find your keys. Yeah, I'm going to find my keys. Yeah. I will find my keys. I have two sets. I have to find them. Yes. Okay. So now look at the next step. It's our green fleece here. Yeah, okay. So that is our next step. Now I told you to cut them um, on your paper to have those cut uh, 11 and a half by 8 inch. But I'm always in a hurry and I didn't do it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna position my bigger piece of fusible fleece. And I always like to put the fusible side facing up because, you know, if I'm using the satin, I wanna fuse the, the satin to um, the fusible fleece because then it, everything lays nice and smooth. But see, I see my, now it's kinda hard to see my line because I use silver, but I'm just gonna make sure that it is covering that line by about a half inch, I want. I don't. Well, I guess I could do it. Well, no, half inch, because I want to trim it close. I want to make sure that I don't have any fabric in my seam allowance. So here I am. I'm looking good. I laid it there. Remember, no placement line. I'm just gonna start to sew. 
I have the um, fleece in the hoop, laying in the hoop, loose with the fusible side facing up. And don't worry, Steve, I already checked to make sure my hoop wouldn't hit the wall. Good, we've done that before. We have done that before, yes. So there. I kind of stay with it until it's all the way tacked down. See if there's any bubbles. Sometimes hold that corner up there a little bit, but everything's really laying nice and flat. And it goes over twice. You could stop it and advance to the next step if you wanted to. So why don't we do that? Let's stop. We don't even need to tie a knot. Stop, cut. Okay, it stays there. But now if I go to the plus minus button at the bottom of the screen, so plus minus, and then I'm at I'm at step number two. Okay, to the screen. Okay, so I'm going to uh, say okay. I'll go back to, here's our plus minus button. I use that all the time. I'm at step two of four. I want to see three of four. So three of four, because look what happens. Your hoop slides right in front of you, so you could trim right here, if you're careful. So it's all, it's so, so, I know you're careful. So I, I am using my applique scissors because I don't want to snip through my, um, my no-show. So I kind of position it and turn it a little bit. And what it's doing is holding my fusible fleece away from the no-show. And I want to trim as close as I can. Okay, so I'm going to, maybe I'll just go across the bottom. Now see, I, I, could, I could switch over here, and then that would make it easier. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this time it's just, if I want to leave it in the hoop, I'm just going to hold up my fusible fleece and use that. I still turn it a little bit because it holds that fleece away, and there's no chance of cutting where I don't want it cut. Okay, so I'll slide that one aside. And then here again, it's kind of hard to get it started because your um, scissors are kind of up in the air. So I'm, I'm still pulling on it. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm still just tilting my applique scissors a little bit. Okay, ooh, it didn't cut very close there. Okay. And just carefully, you don't want to bump that hoop. So really, you're safer to go to a flat table. But I'm always in a hurry. And so I'm going to just do it here. And here from this angle, I think I'll go over there. And OK. And here, I'll get in a good position. You're good. And there. And I'm going to kind of pull on that. So I make sure that my blade goes right next to those stitches. I'm trying to trim as much away as I can. Okay, so now um, that was step two. Now step three is lay your main fabric down and stitch in place. So you'll see on, on the steps, it's just gonna sew the rectangle. Okay, now you know it has nap. Oh, I forgot all about this. Okay, so this fabric has nap. So if I hold it in this direction, it's darker, right? Then if I hold it in this direction and you want to do your bag, both pieces in the same direction. So where is my fusible fleece? That is at the bottom. I have the lighter side. So, so think about that when you lay down your first piece, is take a look at your velvet. You only have to worry about the, with this with velvet and corduroy because it has nap. Okay, then I'm gonna, and, and so usually I touch it and I feel for the, so usually it's the rough side when you rub your finger up, that's the rough side, and down is the smooth side. So. You can go by the color. Now that looks, see, look at the difference in color. Look at the difference. So be careful of that, okay? So you'll get that with any nap fabric. So now I know to turn my fabric in this direction and then they match, okay? All right, so I have it in this direction 
and I'm going to lay it down and position. I would have normally ironed that to get the crease out, which I'm just going to go ahead, see if I can get the crease to come out. So you're going to have some excess, so save the excess because Jess has you make um, some little pieces out of your velvet. So, but look at this, I can slide up a little bit and then I don't have to worry about that wrinkle in my fabric. So yeah, see how, see how that's the rough side. This is the smooth and this will be the lighter color. So if I was paying attention, I really like the darker better, but as long as I have the two matching, I'm okay. So I'm just smoothing it and I'll press start. If we see the velvet getting roughed up, then I will stop the machine and raise that foot another, another button. So I'm looking for bubbles. I don't want any bubbles. Maybe I just kind of hold on to that corner. And what I often do is I'll go up to this corner and just kind of pull on it a little bit because I don't want a bubble to form. So just gently pulling on it and I think I'm safe. And this is another step where you, you don't have to go over it twice. So we could stop. So why don't we do that again? Okay, so I'm going to stop the machine. I don't need to tie a knot, but if I did, it felt like I did need to tie a knot, I would go to this button, hold it in, and it's going to tie a knot and stop. Okay, I'd cut my thread. So let's say I wanted to take my hoop out. I would cut my thread. Then I would go to my screen. I'm already in plus minus on my screen. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna go out and then show you the plus minus again. So plus minus, I'm on step three. I'm gonna press the down arrow and it's gonna take me to step four, which will be doing the fancy fill. All right, so we're ready to sew. So I am going to just press start. Isn't it funny that it starts right there, right in the middle, but it does. The machine knows what it's doing. So, and I do really like the sparkle of the silver. So I pick silver because I would put a silver, well, Jess did, she put a silver strap with the, on the bag. So if I was gonna use a gold strap or a gold thread, I would uh, get a gold strap. So we will have more kits tomorrow, both kits that we have today, they're actually my favorite ones. But uh, tomorrow we're going to have an ivory velveteen and I think we have a red and a green. So we will pick some of those for tomorrow. Okay, should we show our kits? Sure. Okay, so the first kit, I'm just going to jump up and grab it and show it because I want to show you the lining fabric. So I'll just bring them closer to me. Yeah, I'll go down there. I'm just bringing everything with me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's following me. It's so funny that the camera follows me. Yes, this is so cool, isn't it? Yes. All right. So, I'll, well, should I just stay right here? I can. Yeah, yeah I'll stay here while it's sewing. The camera followed me, Steve. Okay. So, all right. So patterns. So wouldn't that look pretty when I do the one for the wedding? And just, you know, maybe every other star have a little pearl, even every third, just little pearls. So I'm very, very excited about that. Okay. That, okay. Now, okay. So you will get um, three eighths of a yard of the cornflower blue velveteen. It's just beautiful. This is um, okay. Kelly bag. Okay, three, uh, three eighths of a yard. 
So, and then you will also get three eighths of a yard of the lining fabric. And we chose this. We just shopped all around the store and looked for something that was really pretty. And on Jess's video, she always picks, she picked a really pretty fabric too. So, okay. Now you also get this 47 inch bag chain. Okay. Then these D rings, you only need two, but they come in packages of four. Okay. Then you also will get a piece of the um, heavyweight fusible fleece. Okay. And the pattern and the printed out instructions. So you'll get all of those things. So there's your Kelly bag pattern. This is, I'm going to open up the chain. It is 47 inches long. It is the exact chain. Okay. So what Jess said, what inspired her was Grace Kelly and fabrics that were popular in the 50s and which she found velveteen was popular in the 50s. And you'll get her chain and the chain has these little hooks on it and then the D-rings. So she is at one part in your pattern. She has, oh, and also you will get double face, you will get a satin ribbon that matches the blue. So you'll get enough of that to do your drawstrings. Now remember, you can use fabric, but I think the velveteen, um, if you wanted matching velveteen for the drawstrings, I don't know how well they would pull. So I think you need something satiny for the drawstrings. So I think I'd either go, if the, we are waiting for our cornflower blue ribbon to come through, if it doesn't come in, um, I think I would go with a silver ribbon or a piece of silver fabric will be in your kit. Okay, so then, then remember you're gonna get the printed instructions for doing IQ Designer. I can't wait to do one with a, like I'm not one for going for geometric, so I can't. So we're gonna step over to the Altair after we show you our other kit. And then, um, and then I'm gonna do it on the Altair, but we're gonna pick a fancier fancy fill. Okay, all right, so that is the blue selection. Now for, I'll just roll that one up here. Bye, Bye Ella. Okay, so the other one is black. And look at how pretty this is. So, so this, you'll get the black three ace yard of the black velveteen. You will get three ace yard of this gorgeous, gorgeous Chonga Wang uh, fabric from Timeless Treasures. Our velveteen is from Robert Kaufman. So very, very elegant. And then you will get the pattern. You get the pattern. Um, we went with silver with the uh, black and then the silver D-rings and the fusible fleece will come with it and our instructions on our notes from the IQ designer. Okay, do you think we could go over to the Altair now? I was going to talk about, I was going to do my little Do your little yeah. thing on the Altair and then we'll do it on the Altair. Okay. Right here, yeah. <clears throat> so, Maybe um, I'll slide aside over here. Perfect. And... Okay. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Easy. 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 We up here? Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, last night, if you guys missed last night or didn't catch uh, when we talked about it, uh, the Altair 2 is a new machine that came out um, a few months ago. We've had the Altair for a couple years, and then they came out with the Altair 2 and an upgrade for people who have the Altair to upgrade their Altair with the same features. But uh, through the, uh, for the month of December, BabyLock is introducing a new um, bundle package uh, that uh, is pretty, it's pretty exciting because I, I, haven't, I haven't seen a bundle package like this before. So what it is, the Altair 2 is a step down from the Solaris. So it's a sewing and embroidery machine. It has IQ Designer. Um, it also goes up to a 9.5 by 14 hoop. You can send, uh, you can take a picture of what's in the hoop on your smart device and send it over to the machine. It works really easily, but um, the bundle comes with uh, a collection of embroidery designs 
the new 7x12 magnetic hoop from Baby Lock, the extra large quilted trolley, the 20 piece foot kit, 26 piece foot kit. We're also including the 9.5x14 dime magnetic hoop. We I use didn't that know for, they got the 26 piece foot kit they too. Do, yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So they're the dime um, magnetic hoop. We use that for our edge to edge quilting and we love to do uh, edge to edge quilting on our, on our embroidery machines. So we feel like you need everything to get started right away. So that's why we want that hoop to, to be included. But the other thing, the other thing they're including is a brand new Victory Serger included for free. Glory, just unbelievable. It is yes. uh, included in the package. So you get the bundle, the brand new machine in the box and a uh, Victory Serger. And the Victory Serger is actually one of the, is it's a really nice serger. It's actually right back here. Um, it's, it has jet air threading for the loopers. So you just push this button and it shoots the thread through the loopers and it has no tension knobs. So it automatically will figure out the tension, whether you put like a 40 weight thread in or an eight weight thread in. When you run your stitches through, they'll turn out perfect every time. There's no tension adjustments. And when you work with a serger, what's the two things that give you trouble? Tension and threading. And with the Baby Lux, you don't have either of those issues. So um, if you're interested in learning more, you can give us a call, uh, 412, 344-2330 and then option two and we can talk about it we can talk about pricing and financing and, and discounts and all that kind of stuff by paying with cash so if you guys want this machine now's a really nice time because of yes. that, that free serger and uh the other thing we're saying is that say you want say you know you you want a serger but you want to step it up for one of the bigger sergers that victory credit we can apply to a bigger serger or a, a, you know one of the higher up sergers too if you're interested that way but they're also running the same promotion on the Baby Lock Meridian. Now the Meridian is an embroidery only machine and it goes up to the nine and a half by 14 hoop. So it has a big hoop. It also has IQ designer. So if you're like us, we're running two, three, four machines at one time to get projects done. So if at home you wanna, you wanna sew more, you wanna do more and you have room for two machines, the Meridian's a really nice choice because it's just an embroidery machine. It's dedicated for that and it goes up to the big hoop. And then with the Meridian, you get a bundle as well. You get the, the seven by 12 um, magnetic hoop you get uh, the wheeled trolley. Uh, there's only one foot that the Meridian takes, so there's no need for a foot kit, but you also get that free victory too, uh, included with that, and it's free. It's it's free, so. <laughs> and they, uh, somebody asked if it had the built-in edge to edge. It doesn't it have does. the built-in edge to edge. Well, what you can do you is you get can, a Solaris you vision get a for Solaris that. vision to do that, yeah. But it does have- uh, Steve can make that happen. We can make that happen too, <laughs> yes. It has stipple built-in, so you can just pour a stipple oh, yeah. into the whole hoop and you just stipple all over the quilt, you move to the next section, line it and stipple, stipple. So you can still do edge to edge, edge quilting edge, yeah. with, with the machine. It just doesn't have that built-in feature like that. I'll have to show so, that when I go to yeah. the Altair, remind me. And we just were working with a customer downstairs. Mm -hmm. She wanted to put a fancy fill in the border. We hooped up the border, took a picture of it, sent it over the machine, and IQ designer designed the points where the where the border is, and she quoted it. It looks oh, really good, yeah. Wow, yep. wow. Yep. She, was, she was trying to do we'll it at home. We'll demo that. It is, yeah, uh -huh. we will. Huh. Yeah. So, uh, and then we also have the Slayer's Vision. Uh, if, if you, if you want to go for that, if you want to, we have a, a package going on with that. Uh, our package includes a brand new machine, the Powell 11 software, wow. the 30 foot presser foot kit. Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, there's a lot that comes with this one. Uh -huh. The five by seven magnetic hoop, uh, a 40 spool set of thread, the inspirational guide, uh, the dime magnetic hoop, we added that. You get the trolley, uh, the Master and IQ book, and a bunch of fills and motifs, the extra fills you can add in your wow, machine. Wow, what a so, Christmas, right? Yeah, it is. Yes. So, uh, call us because we'll be happy to talk about it. So, mm -hmm. so I think we're going to start. Uh, we're going to show you how it's done on the Altair. Yes. Uh, people who have the Altair and the Meridian or the Destiny, this is uh, the buttons and everything you want to hit for, for your machine. So take a look at this and we'll, uh, we'll be back. Now, Steve, I didn't catch that it was roughing it up. Yeah. But then I raised it up to one, you know, one more notch. It's not even touching. And, and it's not touching it. Yeah. So I have a feeling I might have a burr at the bottom of my foot or something. But I see it did the middle first and I didn't catch it. But like oh, right over here, you can see it's not touching it. So I should have gone up to two notches. Your foot has a bunion. Yes. <laughs> yes. Foot has a bunion. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to plug in the mouse over here. And we're going to do the same thing over here. And I was just checking to make sure that the mouse is working on my uh, cutting mat. And it is, so I don't even need a mouse pad. So, okay. So uh, 
same thing. We're going to start out in IQ Designer. Okay, you let me know when you're ready. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. All right. IQ Designer. Shapes. See, the, the buttons are the same. So shapes, that circle and the square. So this is the same for the Altair, Meridian, and the Destiny. Now, um, we're going to select the uh, square and then OK. Size. So here's the size button right next to rotate. Size. Now this time we cannot go to the ten and a half wide, but we can we can go to nine and a half. But I hate to go to exactly nine and a half. So I'm going to take that to nine point four. So that is going to be the width. So I'm going to watch. I'm watching these numbers up here, and I'm just clicking on this button with the arrows, with all four arrows pointing out. And when I get to nine, actually, there's 9.12, 9.36. I'll just keep bumping it up till I get to 9.4. Then my height, I want the height of it to be 13 and a half. So remember, that was the same as on the Solaris Vision. So 13.5 tall. There I'm at. See, I'm watching these numbers right up here. And I'm just selecting the button that has the arrow pointing up and arrow pointing down. And that's only changing that one dimension. So I'm going to 13.5. Oop, I went beyond it. There, 13 point. And there I just click, click, click till I get to my 13.5. You know, it doesn't matter if you're at 13.58. You know, it's, it's such a little difference. Then, okay. We're still on to step 10, so we're going to go, step 10 is line properties, so it shows a zigzag, we don't want to sew that, so I'm going to click on line properties, straight stitch, red, and OK. Line bucket, click on the line, so right there the line is black, click on the line to turn it red. Then we need to save this. So here's our memory buttons right at the bottom. So you're going to click on the pocket with the arrow pointing in. That means it's going to put something into memory and then save it on the machine. Next, set. Now remember we saved it. So we don't, and here I'm at the part where I can change the stitch length. And this is, again is just a uh, positioning line. So I will know where to put my fusible fleece. So uh, I'm just going to leave it at the default setting and click on, now this is different, step 20 is should be preview. Preview. And then set. OK. Remember we saved it. This is their thing where if you saved, all right, now here again, I'm going to go to add. So here we're on step 21, add. And this is where we add the fusible fleece. So add IQ designer. There's the button. So you haven't lost what you did. It's still in the embroidery mode. We're just adding to it. Shapes. So the circle and the square. The square. OK size and then we want this one seven inches tall by 9.4 wide so I'm just going to increase it until I see it get to seven so I'm pressing all four this time and really it's going to get up there real quick it only has a little bit to go so I'm just going to kind of click along the way. There I'm at 6.98, almost there. So I'll do click at a time. So there's seven. And now I need it 9.4 wide. So I'm going to click on this button here that shows an arrow pointing to the left and an arrow pointing to the right. And we keep going until it gets to 9.4 wide. So your bag's just going to be a little bit narrower. Every other dimension is going to be the same. Okay, so I'm going there, 9.32, maybe I'll just click and click 
until I get it to 9.4. Oh, there I am at 9.4. Okay, then I'm going to go to the next page. Okay, then OK. Step 30 is OK. Line property, see it's going to do zigzag again. See how zigzags in the window? So click on the paper to the right of that. And then line property straight stitch, green. And I like to pick a bright green because all these others look black. So that's why I go with bright colors. Okay, line bucket, touch the line to turn it green. Next, I need to save this. I didn't really need this again, but I was worried that I might. So I'm gonna click on the pocket with the arrow pointing in, save on the machine. Then preview, set, okay. Now I need to move that fusible fleece down to the bottom and, and just wants us to put it a quarter inch above that that placement line. So I am going to go up to settings. Oh, look at this. Look at this. This machine has a upgrade. I have no idea what it's going to do, but see the Wi-Fi symbol there and the exclamation? That means that there is an update available for the machine and you just click on it and it will walk you through the steps on how to do it. Okay, so I clicked on settings and I'm going to the grid and we are going to, I want the 3 ace grid. So 3 ace, okay. Then edit, move, move it down. So I'm going to come to my down arrows and I'm looking at the bottom there and it's hard to see because those, it's, they're little. But I'm going to go down just a little bit. Ooh, way too low. So I'm going to go click at a time until it looks like I'm at about a quarter inch. But I can zoom in. So see you've zoom buttons up here. So if I click on plus and plus again, and let's go to 200 because I think that's the easiest. I'm going to press my down arrow till I can see the lines. And there they are. I can see the lines. So there I'm at. That kind of looks like three-eighths of an inch. I think I need to move that one down a little farther. Like maybe almost at half of that block. I think that looks good. That looks like that's going to be about a quarter inch. Okay. Then okay. Let's go back down to a hundred so we can see everything. Okay. Then what, I, what do I need to do now? I've put my fusible fleece down. Now I need to uh, lay down my velvet and baste it in place. So we're going to go to Add, IQ Designer, Memory Pocket with the arrow pointing out. We're going to click on the machine. And we're going to look for our red rectangle. The red rectangle set, then, and I can't see, so let's go back to the settings page and grid and go, I'm going to go back this way. So remember, I only went one click over and it got me to 3 A. So let's see what our options are. We have the one inch, we have a cross hatch, we have the uh, center X and nothing. And I want nothing, but you decide what you want but I can see better here. So there is my um, basting line. So I have to tell it what I want it to do. So I'm going to go to line properties. Again, it always picks zigzag first. Line properties, straight stitch, and then let's go to blue and OK. Then we're going to go to line bucket. Click on the line to turn it blue. And next. And preview. Stitch length doesn't matter. We're just tacking it down. OK. Then set. 
okay, just a couple extra steps. Then, okay, so I have, now I want to add the fancy fill. So let's go add IQ designer. So we're on step 67, add IQ designer, pocket with the arrow pointing out. So right down at the bottom, there's the pocket with the arrow pointing out, the sewing machine, red rectangle, set, Line properties. So I don't want it to sew that rectangle again. So I'm going to go to line properties, select no sew, everything grays out, then OK, line bucket, click on the red line. It's going to turn it gray because you told the machine you don't want to sew this. But we need a, you know, we need a boundary uh, to tell it where we want the fancy fill to stop. So now um, we are going to go to the next page and, okay, so we, and then we're going to go to fill properties. We didn't have to go all the way into embroidery this time. We stayed in IQ Designer. So now we're going to go down to fill properties. We're on step 77, fancy fill. See how this is grayed out? You have to pick the fancy fill button. Then you can select, press select, and look at the fancy fills. I, I, go, I love this one right here. I love, love, love that one. Um, there's so many pretty ones. So they added to the number of fancy fills. Here's some new ones. So you do have the crosshatch with the star, which I like, but I love these. So I am going to pick this one right here. I'm picking 022. Okay. Then purple. Maybe I'll go with that lighter shade of purple. Purple. Okay. Fill bucket. So see how my purple fancy fill is in the window now. Purple bucket, I mean, the bucket, fancy fill bucket, and then click inside the rectangle to fill it. Next. Now here's where we change the size. So the, just the buttons are in a different place. So 100% and let's go to 125 and just see what we think. There's 125 set. Now, in, on this machine, it does not change it till the next screen. Now, remember, I don't want it to, I want it to do the outline, and it is on, okay? So that means it's going to, and you'll, you'll watch it as it goes. So to jump over to a new area, it's going to sew over there instead of cutting the thread and jumping there. So you want to make sure that that outline button is on. Let's just click on it so you can see. So you have two options, on or off. And I want you to have it on because it makes the fancy fill sew out faster. Okay, so we'll set that. And let's, let's look at it. Preview and OK. I like it. I like it at 125. Hmm. Okay, I think that's really pretty. But let's say, oh, I'm in a hurry. I need it to sew fast, but I really think this looks nice. Okay, but return. And then let's go up to 150 and just see what we think. 155, we'll go 150 and set. Now remember, we don't see anything. We go preview and OK. Just a couple extra steps. And there it is a little bigger, which is pretty, but I liked it at 125 better. So you decide. You decide where you want it. Now it's set, OK. We're in embroidery. And let's, let's click on edit and close it down. But you've got your four steps here, okay? So you will follow along with the steps. So first you're going to sew the placement line, then you're going to position your fusible fleece, and then sew that, trim off the fusible fleece, then you are going to lay your main fabric down on top, and then it's going to tack down the main fabric, 
Then step four is, is it's going to sew the fancy fill. So same thing, and you need to do two of those. And then I, I put on the paper, go to Sally Tomato's YouTube page and watch their Kelly online class for bag construction. But if you want to, um, I think we should sew this. So we will pick a date. So tomorrow I want to show a few more kits for this, these Kelly bags. And we have, we, we'll, we'll pick a date tomorrow and, and we'll let you know when we're going to sew together the Kelly bag. I'm thinking we could get Tiffany to do it on a Tuesday because she's our bag maker and everyone's used to doing uh, bags at 11 a.m. No, or we went noon. noon. We changed it to noon. Mm -hmm. Noon on Tuesdays. So noon on Tuesdays and we'll let you know when we're going to finish the Kelly bag. All right. Okay, so I think did we we had some other items to show them, right? Yeah. Okay, good, 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 good. Because there was a whole bunch of things we forgot to show you last night. So um, one of them was the Frost Hill. Okay, and Frost Hill, um, they are ready. The books are at the printer, so they are they're going to be shipping. They are loading the designs on as we speak and putting stickers on all the flash drives. But Frost Hill, I have it over here, so I want to show you what Joni's done with it so far. So here, okay. So here is your main. Isn't it cute? It is. Okay, so you see all the mugs with the peppermints and the mittens and the snowmen. This one was really fun to sew out. So this is, it's got, uh, we did the one in the center. So on your um, flash drive, uh, Nancy Halverson did not have the cardinal in the corner, but we took it off of uh, the design with the fox and we put it on the corner of the house and we just felt like, we liked it there. So Tommy gives it to you both ways. So he gives you all the designs in different sizes, but I want to show you some samples of some of them. Oh, here's one of the snowmen. So Joni's in process of making all the projects. So here's the cute snowmen. I think um, Ruth Ann was with us. Oh, it was the Christmas tree we were comparing. And the Christmas tree had over 30 pieces that you had to sew together. And um, if you did it Tommy's way in embroidery, it was only like five pieces of fabric. So it's just so much easier. And they turn out really cute. And a little tip I have for you uh, with the white snowmen is if the background fabric shines through or shows through the white, I just lay another piece of fabric right down. I don't bother with... Um, putting uh, uh, the shape flex on the back. I just lay another piece of fabric right on top and it, it eliminated any time the white, the background fabric showed through the white. Okay, but here is Burr. This is cute. And Tommy gives you this one in three different sizes. This is the smallest one he gives you. Okay, and then jo it looks like Joni's working on this one next. This is freezing season. And I said to Tommy, this is so cute, but I want it bigger. So this is the smallest one, and it gives you three sizes, I think, like an 8x8 and a 9x9. Okay, this is the fox design that I mentioned, and there is the little cardinal from the fox design. And this one, too, he gives them to you in three different sizes. And here is one of the mugs of coffee. Oh, this one is so cute. So this one here is the snowman, and he's given a carrot to the bunny. And the, carrot, the bunny and the snowman have scarves on. And you're supposed to use, Nancy has you use buttons, but the buttons sometimes are hard to find. And so, of course, we, uh, we had Tommy digitize those. So we, our buttons are just thread. So, so really fun. So uh, they are ready to ship. I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them go out over the week. Well, definitely on Monday, they'll be going out. Yeah. So, okay. So then. Steve had to leave, but. Uh, Steve had to leave. Oh, is it after five could, already? Yeah, he had to go. Oh, my goodness, I go too long, um, don't I? Uh, but let's just show the Frost Hill finishing kit because we forgot to show that last night. Right. 
Yeah. Okay, so here. I think that's right there Fall in the pouch. Kit. Yeah. Is there one open or is this? You just want to pull out. I'll just this? do this one. Yeah. 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 So so I went through, you know, I look at all the pictures and I make sure that we have all the fabric uh, so this, that you can complete the projects. Is the Frost Hill fabric kit available? Is this what she means by the... Yes, this yes. is it. Okay, yes. Good. Yes, this is the Frost Hill finishing kit. It is available. They are ready to ship right with, uh, so right with your flash drive, it'll, it'll ship right at the same time. And so you'll get, you know, extra of the house fabric. So, uh, so you can, you know, when you do the uh, mugs, you can put little, um, pictures in and you know sometimes when you position this house it ruins the house right next to it so you need extra of that and then some of the designs so you'll look in your book you'll see where they used this so all of these extra fabrics you're gonna need extra of the white and I gave you I think it was one yard of each of the snow the pebble snow and then the white on white whisper weave, just because there's so many snowmen and so much white in it. And then she puts a lot of the teal in. So the main block, the border is done with the teal. And uh, she recommends this uh, it's for the back. So you got a yard of this one uh, with the white flower. So that you'll have plenty to complete the, the projects that are in the book. So her fabric suggestions were just for the main block and so it wasn't enough fabric to do all the projects so so we'll just end it there and we will see you tomorrow at one o'clock we are going to sew the triangle bags on the serger and I'm going to get Joni to show us the belt loop maker because that's what we're going to use for a little strap on the triangle bag so we'll see you then okay. bye bye everybody. Thanks, everybody thank you